he was our main man in New South Wales, a parliamentarian. And to touch on that subject of, of racial bigotry, I, I agree the White Australia policy was absolutely never premised on this concept that we um, we just hate everyone else and therefore we don't want to let them in. There was serious qualities to the idea of the policy. Henry Parks, in his second reading of the Chinese restriction bill in the New South Wales colonial parliament, said uh, they are not an inferior race. They are a superior set of people, a nation of old and deep rooted civilization. It is because I believe the Chinese to be a powerful race capable of taking a great hold upon this country and because I want to preserve the type of my own nation, I am all, I am and always have been opposed to the influx of Chinese. I contend that if this young nation is to maintain the fabric of its liberties, unassailed and unimpaired, it cannot admit into its population any element that of necessity must be of an inferior nature and character. In other words, I've maintained at all times that we should not encounter or admit amongst us any class of persons, whatever, whom we are not prepared to advance to all our franchises. Um, so basically, Henry Parks, you know, he was he was a great thinker of his time. He was known as the father of federation. He was the one who made federation very politically popular. He campaigned on the issue. Um, he was of the view that, so New South Wales had at this time managed to introduce a poll tax. So if you were Chinese and you were getting off a ship in Sydney Harbour, there'd be a quite heavy financial cost to you getting off the boat. You were allowed in, but it would come at a cost. Um, Queensland and South Australia did not have this. And at the time, uh, they were basically skipping the poll tax by landing in Queensland and South Australia and walking across the border. So we had this issue where Victoria and New South Wales, who were trying to protect their ethnic homogeneity, were being swamped by Chinese uh, migrants through Queensland and South Australia. So it became increasingly evident that there needed to be a single unified national border, Australia and the Pacific Ocean, and that every colony in, in the continent should be part of this one single nation, which has a single immigration policy and a single controllable border. This was a big, um, big area of the Australian Natives Association platform as well. So the ANA was started in 1871, and it was always a uh, it was in favour of the native-born European descent people of Australia. And as part of that, it was a staunch advocate of a white Australia and of federation because they saw that getting that single unified border is going to be the thing that prevents us from becoming another melting pot like had been seen in the United States. The Honourable King O'Malley, who became the Minister for Home, of, Home Affairs in one of the early Australian parliaments, said, If the Australian people had only lived in the southern states of America, as I have, and had seen the dire results of the present mingling of the Africans with the whites, they would put their feet down and say, we are not going to leave such an unholy problem behind for future generations to solve. And in the same vein, Jack Beasley, who was a, a New South Wales parliamentarian in the 1920s, said, it's possible to live on the highest terms of mutual respect with one's neighbour, whilst recognising that it would be destructive of all harmony to invite him to become a permanent resident in one's household. So you had these, these ideas, you know, we, we Australians of European stock, we are in the Pacific, we have Asian neighbours, we should be friends with them. But at the same time, we should recognise it would be destructive of all harmony. These people don't share the same heritage as us. They they did not uh, adopt Magna Carta. They did not adopt the you know the Act of Settlement. They did not adopt Roman law, Roman principles of equity and justice. They are completely alien to us. And you know one of the you. We talk about white nationalism and why it's important to be white. And I think one of the great reasons for that is because we are actually related by blood to the people who died for these high principles of civilization, which we hold very dear. So these Asian migrants, um, as Henry Parks was saying, they, they have alien concepts to us. They are not going to develop the same brand of civilization, which we hold so dear. They have their own ways and 
their own ways are definitely noble to them and something that they would venerate. But to us, we have a higher um, calling based on our own heritage and based on our own concepts of civilization and justice and equity and all the rest of it. So the march towards federation was really for that single unified border. Um, James Stewart said in 1901, and this is during the debates on the Immigration Restriction Act, we do not desire to keep out those colored people simply because they're inferior to us, but because for racial, social and economic reasons, we cannot permit them safely to enter. With regards to race, we cannot mix with them. There is no natural affinity between them and us. And if an attempt were made to confide them and us in one bottle, so to speak, one or the other must be precipitated to the bottom. A compacted, homogenous community cannot be formed out of such hetero heterogeneous compounds. The thing ought not to be attempted because it is absolutely impossible. With regards to the social aspect of the question, these people are brought up under institutions entirely different from ours. Their religion, position and customs are different. I should be a traitor to my country, to my race and to those of our ancestors who have conferred benefits upon us if I were a party to anything which would allow these Asiatics to come here and destroy in one fell swoop all the efforts of centuries, for these reasons, I think, we are all agreed that the colored man must be kept out, whether he is a Japanese, a Chinaman, or an African. So I think in general ideological terms, aside from the labor issues of wages and, and unionism, the intellectual concept was that white people, people of European descent, are in fact inheritors of political and social and cultural institutions dating all the way back through from Rome up to now that were noble and needed to be defended and would be absolutely destroyed by an influx of foreigners. You know, as it said, the Chinese could take this country with a single year's surplus population. I think all of the founders understood and realized that a non-European uh, descent majority in Australia would mean a death of all the, the legal and political institutions which we hold so dear and we think are crucial to our civilization. Now, how